Okay, Math Nines, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we'll look at uh, Chapter 1.1, finding square roots of perfect squares. So we'll start off by uh, by finding uh, or defining what a square root is and what a perfect square is. Okay, so a perfect square is a number that can be written as the product to equal numbers that are rational. Okay, so a perfect square is a number that can be written as the product of two equal numbers that are rational. So and just a reminder, a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction, but it is also a number that either repeats or terminates if it's written as a decimal. So. Um, then we get into square roots, and square root is a number that can be multiplied by itself to give the original number. Okay, so a square root is a number that can be multiplied by itself to give the original number. Okay, and a couple buttons that'll be uh, key for us um, as we're going through this chapter is the x squared button on our calculator and also the square root button on our calculator. These are often uh, right on top of each other or the same button. Uh, with one you might have to hit the second function key to get uh, get the other and the reason that they are often on top of each other is because they they undo each other. They are opposite operations. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay so perfect squares, uh, a perfect square is, hey, uh, if our x or our variable, our unknown, is 1, then that number squared is just going to be that number times itself. So 1 squared is just 1, 2 squared is 2 times 2, or 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared 16. When you get into uh, bigger numbers, uh, we can take 40 and multiply it by itself. We can multiply the number part together and we get 16 and then we have two zeros so this is like 40 times 40 so what I'm talking about there is just multiplying the number part and then adding those two zeros at the end 50 squared would be 2500 3600 90 squared is 80 100 120 squared well that would be 120 times itself 1400. Okay, so that's the idea with perfect squares, and what we'll get familiar with is just, uh, you know, going back and forth between perfect squares and square roots, and just understanding what each of those mean. You, you'll have this formula sheet. This formula sheet uh, will, you'll have this on tests and also your final exam. Okay, so this gives you your table of perfect squares. So they're nice to remember, but you don't have to remember them all. Um, and we'll use this table to, to answer a bunch of questions around perfect squares. So if you're given um, the side and area, it's really referring to um, looking at a square and saying, hey, if a side length is 5 centimeters and in a square all sides are equal, then the area would just be 5 times 5. So it's a bit of an analogy. You can say, hey, the side length of a square is 5, and that number squared would be the, represent the area um, of a square. So now if you just go through this uh, this table, we can imagine just multiplying each number by itself. So 6 over 5 times 6 over 5, we end up with 36 on top, 25 on bottom. Our units, which are meters, our units end up as units squared. So for each one of these, you can pause here and try these yourself. I'm just going to populate this table. Okay, so over in this table, um, if you're given the area and you want to find the side length, we want to find, hey, take that area, if it's 49, if the area is 49, you're asked, hey, what is the side length of a square? So to get that, we just do figure out the square root, 
of 49 or ask ourselves, hey, what number times itself is going to give us the area or the number that we started with? Okay, so again, I'll populate this table pretty fast. You're welcome to pause here and uh, try these yourself. Okay, so just a reminder with a couple of these, um, specifically with this 0 0.09, uh, remember that if we have two decimals, we're multiplying them. We can think of just multiplying those numbers, like 3 times 3 is just 9, but then we have to go back and think, okay, well, how many um, decimals are in, in this question? There are two numbers that are to the right of the decimal, so in our answer, when we multiply um, decimals, if we have two numbers that are to the right of the decimal place, then our answer has to have two numbers to the right of the decimal place. So it gives you an example of, hey, there's 0.3 times 0.3 gives us, gets us back to the original question, which is 0.09. Okay. Okay, so just to populate this, squaring a number, um, that's like finding the area. If you square a number, that's like finding the area of a square. And if you're asked to square root a number, it's like finding the side length if you're given the area. Okay, and just a, a little extension here before we go on to the second page. Um, when we're dealing with, um, with square roots, um, the uh, word that's often used is the index uh, of a root. So I'm just going to write down the square root of 49. Okay, so we're asked to find hey, with the square root of 49, what is the number that multiplies by itself twice to give you uh, 49. Okay, so another way that we can write that is 49 to the exponent of 1 over 2. So the index of a root is, now with square roots, we don't write this little 2 here, but with just a square root, we're being asked to find itself being asked to find, hey, what number times itself twice will give us 49. So we can rewrite that question like so. And this answer, if we think of the square root of 49, that's just going to be 7. So if we extend that into cubed roots, anything that's not 2, anything like a cube root or a fourth root um, of a number, we have to write the index um, in this um, question. So, and this sign, sorry, I should also comment this sign here, this is a radical sign. It's radical. Okay, so with a, uh, if we're asked to find the cubed root of 27, we're asked to find, hey, what number times itself three times uh, will give us 27? So the answer to the cubed root of 27 will be 3 because 3 times 3 times 3 um, gives us 27. Now, cube root and, or sorry, cube root is another um, one that is likely on your calculator. Uh, you have to look for it, and if it's not, then you might have a button that looks like, looks like this, uh, and that's just saying, hey, what is the uh, index on the uh, root that you're trying to find? So we'll cover this uh, more in class, but uh, those buttons are available to you on your calculator, and, and you, you get into these quite a bit in, in later math courses. Okay, if we flip to the back side, we'll just do a bunch of examples here. Okay, so if we're asked to find um, the square, or sorry, calculate the number whose square root is 3 over 8, so... There's a good visual for this question on page 9 in your textbook. Uh, we're really just asked to find, hey, uh, whoops, that should be 3 over 8. What number will give us, what number when square rooted will give us 3 over 8? Well, that number is going to be 9 over 64. Okay, so with 1.8, we're thinking of doing, okay, well, if we know that the square root of a number is 1.8, we can do 1.8 squared to find out where that number started, okay, which is 3.24. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick little algebra thing here. This is also another way to think of this is like, hey, you have, you're given the square root of a number, um, and in this case, the square root of your number is 1.8. Okay, so this is the square root of a number. It gives us 1.8. So. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, 
these two buttons on your calculator are opposites. So in algebra, we get to later questions if we we're going to talk about the opposite operation. So the opposite operation to the square root is to or is the square button. These two are opposite operations. So if you were to square the square root of a number, you end up with just that number itself. Okay, and then our golden rule of algebra tells us that whatever we do to one side of an equation, we have to do to the other. So we can think of, hey, if we did that, uh, this operation of squaring the left side, if we do that same thing to the right side, that's going to get us to our answer. Okay. Okay, so this next couple of questions, finding each square root, um, 1600, um, I, I'm going to show you this where we can separate uh, the numbers in here. We can think of this as being the square root of 16 times square root of 100, and I'm breaking it up into those two numbers because each of those numbers, 16 and 100, are both perfect squares. This simplifies to uh, the square root of 16 times 100, which is hey, that's just going to be 4 times 10, or 40. Okay, so this format here, again, that's something that you cover in detail in, in grade 10, but uh, here it is there just to, to show you what that looks like. Okay, so if you're, if we're on to B here, if you have the square root of a decimal, the easiest way to deal with that is to, to write this as a fraction. So 6.0016, you can rewrite that as 16 over uh, a 1 with that many zeros. So that's going to be 16 over 10,000. And then if you think of finding the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom, that's just going to be 4 over the square root of um, 10,000 is going to be 100. This is just 0 0.04. Okay, so when you're doing the square roots of um, uh, powers of 10, you're looking for um, even numbers under here, like here we, sorry, even numbers of zeros. So here we have um, four zeros, so the square root of that number is just going to be, hey, that two of those zeros, which is 100. Sorry, that sounds a little confusing even as I explained it, so we'll, we'll definitely discuss that more in class. Okay, um, next set for as to find hey, is each fraction a perfect square? Uh, with question A, we can break this down into an easier number or a simplified fraction is 4 over 9. Is that a perfect square? Yes, because uh, we can do the square root of 4 over 9, and that's going to give us 2 over 3. So is this number a perfect square? You bet. Okay, with 16 over 5, we can think of writing this as, hey, the top, we can do 4 times 4, but on the bottom, uh, there are no two rational numbers that multiply to give us 5, so this is not a perfect square. Okay, next set of examples. Is each decimal a perfect square? Explain. So we can think of 6.25. Again, whenever I have a decimal, I like to think of putting it over uh, or turning it into a fraction. So if we have 625, we can think of moving uh, that decimal place two times. This is like 6.25 over 1. So to get rid of that decimal, I'm going to multiply the top by 100 and the bottom by 100. So that fraction looks like so. And is this a perfect square? Yes, because 625 is a perfect square. It's 25, and so is 100. So is this number a perfect square? Yes, it sure is. Okay, 0 0.627, we can write that as 627 over 1,000. And this is a case where, hey, can you, you know, for the numerator, can you multiply two numbers times itself to give you 627? Well, no, you can't because 627 is not a perfect square. Okay, same with 1,000. Uh, 1,000, this is where a situation where we have an even, or sorry, an odd number of zeros. Um, so this is not a perfect square on the bottom either. So that whole thing is a perfect square. No way. Okay, so the big idea with this section is you're both going to understand the difference between understand the difference between in a short form difference. I'm also going to short form between. Understand the difference between and to calculate.
squares and square roots. Of perfect squares. Okay, in the next section we'll look at uh, non-perfect squares. Uh, for this one we'll start with the ones that are perfect. Okay, your assignment for the textbook will be page 11. We'll do 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. We'll choose every other question there. ECEG, and then we'll do 12, 13, and 14. Okay, so hope that gives you an idea of squares and square roots, and we'll go from go from there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.